Sonia, it's my pleasure. I mean, I can't uh, skip that line. It's a privilege to be sitting with you today. Uh, you know, you've been in this industry for almost 30 years. Uh, first question that I would want to ask you is, how have things changed for us in the last 10-15 uh, years? And do you believe that there is a lot of uh, polarization and misinformation around us now? Thanks, Nazia, and uh, thanks, Samarag. It's great being here. I just wanted to uh, correct a bit uh, of the introduction because uh, this year is 30 years in journalism for me, so that's fantastic, which is why I know Rathi is a bit older, so he's a bit older, older than me. And I think the biggest achievement, if uh, I look back, was uh, not just, of course, the interviews or the stories I did, because I started as a journalist, but the fact that I think I was the first woman editor of a major TV channel. And I think that was a major glass ceiling which uh, I broke and I'm very happy that that is something which I think young journalists should be most proud of today. That I think journalism is the only profession which is really gender neutral in the terms of if you're good enough, you will make it to the top, you can be editor, the sky is really the limit and more. So as an editor, because that really for me is the key controlling, because as an editor it is your job to make sure that you represent the editorial values of the group you, of the group you are uh, editor of. So I think what has made me proudest in the last, uh, say, 10, 15 years is that NDTV has stood apart. I often don't like to use the words brand, or I don't like to use the word uh, profession when you talk about journalism, because for me, journalism has always been a passion. And I believe all young journalists, you can't get into journalism because you think you're going to make good money, or you're going to have a good life, because you're going to have neither of that. And if a young person ever comes to me and says, I want to be an anchor, just a tip, you probably won't get the job. Because anchoring is for us, I won't say the lowest rung, but not like what you should be as a journalist. First, you should be a journalist. You can be a journalist on the news desk. You can be a journalist as a news producer. So I'm very happy that these awards actually looked at producers, directors, graphic designers, because I believe they're all journalists who are telling the story. So I think as editor, what is key is that NDTV created a I won't say to say created, I think NDTV is the flag bearer of a journalism which sadly is extremely rare today. I think a young journalist asked uh, Rajit that uh, what happens if I don't want to do a story for PRPs? I mean, I don't know how many of you know it, but NDTV is actually existed really. We don't, yeah. even though it's a decision which would cost us, both advertisers right now rely on ratings, it costs us cross and revenue. NDTV said we don't believe in ratings, we don't think journalism should be measured by what PRPs are. And we think TRPs are bad for journalism. So we've exited. So if you don't want to do TRP journalism, you can apply to NDTV. And I think we're just, sorry, uh, take Coming that, back to the question, yeah, about that, polarization and misinformation. In the context of that, I think a large, I mean, I just like to ask the room, when did we ever, before the last, say, forget, uh, 10, say, seven years, ever see so many Maulanas and Maulvis and Sadhus on prime time television? Why would we ever interview Maulana on what he feels on anything on to do with news. You may want to interview him if you're a religious channel, or you may want to interview a sadhu if you're some sadhana TV, but why would an NDTV or India Today or a public TV want a sadhu or a Maulana on? Obviously it will be polarized. They have, we know what their views are. Where are the people who you look up to? Where are the inspirational voices? That's what I hope that NDTV stands for. We believe in people who make news, and whatever that may be, they may be a politician, maybe a sports person, maybe a business icon, maybe, as I said, somebody who's led a movement uh, to talk against uh, the young girl who's been gang raped and has decided to fight. That's a newspaper for you. And I think that's so you agree change. that there's a lot of polarization and misinformation around us yeah, these days. I think it's horrifying. In fact, for the first time, in my, uh, I don't know if you all know, but the last week, the INB ministry has intervened and actually said to Indian news channels that you can't, that the news you're reporting is actually angering our friendly countries because, of, I mean, I don't even want to call it news, but it's gone so crazy. And if you just look at the list of it, the nuclear bomb, tub, uh, hoga, the Ukraine way, completely made up stuff. For any journalist, it's the biggest insult when the government is your watchdog. Journalists are government's watchdogs. When and how do you think this this deterioration happened? You know, I mean, it's easy to blame it on TRPs, but I don't think that's the only factor. The TRPs have been there for I think that's one of the, I think that's one of the factors only. So I don't think you blame it only on TRPs. But I think, uh, you know, often it was perhaps, uh, if you look back at the history of the industry, you first said just do darshan. 
then you had very few, uh, TV was the first private TV channel, so I guess in a sense it was a monopoly. Then you had other channels break away, excited TV people, people, which was good. But I think they realized that then to catch up, you had to create a dhamaka. So first the dhamaka was news dhamaka, then the dhamaka came, okay, that's boring, so what is the next dhamaka? Then you look at, acha, make someone fight. And then when new governments came to power, it became about the very same people who would be running after one group in power, now shifted to the next group in power. Yeah. So then it became about, you know, we keep saying at least that journalism is the voice of the voiceless. But sadly, journalism has become the voice of the powerful. And that's happening much more on TV news. That's a very dangerous trend. And I hope, I mean, I was actually very, very happy being on this jury because you saw so many young, bright journalists who are fighting against that. And I think really the people who have let down television journalism is not journalists. But I think really it's often been management and corporate uh, influences which have really let down journalism and what everyone has to fight against. So, uh, because I know we are short on time, I just asked two more questions. One, uh, how at NDTV do you tackle this issue? You know, what kind of training are you giving to your young journalists? Uh, how do you, or here we have a lot of young journalists, you know, how do you tell them to be truthful, uh, stick to facts, do justice to the journalism, and yet, you know, be smart or, you know, just how, how do you manage your way, you know, that you don't have a sedition case against you next morning, you not struggling that, you know, many journalists' careers are at stake right now because, you know, they've tried to report things that... We have many sedition cases against us. Some of the pieces are reported yesterday. As a Gujarat police station to one... So you're a big group, like, you yes. can fight it. Huh? You know, you, you can't. It's not a, whether you're a big group or a small group, it's a very tough thing to fight the legal process. I mean, yeah. we all know what it's like in India. It's not easy. But it is something I think uh, you have to... As I said, journalism is not an easy job. So you have to believe that you have resort in courts. So you have to believe that India is a, still the greatest democracy in the world that uh, times may see tough for now, but things will change. And we can see that, we see it in election after election, no government is there forever or no viewpoint is there forever. I think for young journalists, I would say it was just that the entity, you tell the truth, you report what you see. And I think if you're reporting what you're seeing, you will automatically find that you don't have to make up the kind of stories you see on there. Like every day there's some yatra, we pay. We see so many yatras happening. These are yatras that are just being covered to create some kind of disharmony. You have to just realize that at the end of the day, news is what matters. If you focus on the truth, you don't have to get uh, diverted by other things. And I think that's one of the reasons, perhaps, that in this 40 under 40, you will see that many NDTV young journalists are there. Do you think as uh, MIB or uh, IBF uh, are doing enough to you know, tackle this issue and give more confidence to young journalists? See, I think it's not really, it's a, I mean, we don't want a, a ministries or governments interfering with news. Okay, the industry body, like, we have an industry body also. We do have, we have an ethics uh, which issue which comes to them, but I think if it becomes an everyday issue, they can't deal with every complaint. You know, if it becomes part of an editorial policy, they can't deal with every complaint. I think actually the power lies in the hands of the viewer. Mm -hmm. It's the viewers you should find, uh, this thing that will soon start rejecting TV news. We went through a crisis of credibility just a few years ago where you found that people weren't trusting what the television news anymore. Do you think it has changed? People I, have started trusting again? I think what's happening is trust has become a differentiator. So as I said when you asked about with NDTV existing ratings, how do we do that? Because we believe that advertisers feel that people watch us for trust. And they come to us because that's something you can't put a rating on. Trust but isn't it true that there's also too much polarization? That you know, that, that, that if you vote for a particular party, you watch a particular <coughs> channel, and if you vote for another political party, you watch another political channel, and you too much exchange of news articles are happening on WhatsApp. That no, this is the view, and this is the right view. No, so if you're saying that only people who vote Congress watch NDTV, I'm not sure that's a valid view because no, but that's the claim that people uh, who no, because then who do not to... watch NDTV make. But then we have very few viewers right now, and I can assure you our YouTube ratings are not reflecting that at all, which is really No, but how do you tackle this kind of polarization? I mean, I, I, I watch NDTV, no, but... So I think you have to tackle by believing that at the end of the day, your journalism will win out, and that people can spread rumors. I can tell you the BGP social media cell watches us very closely. And they we have to. We welcome them. <laughs> and I think if you often would see also that in most uh, offices, whether this is... Uh, government or airports or whatever else or even cafe coffee day or even other things you'd find the channels due to NDTV. So I do think that uh, just uh, YouTube is one great way of seeing what people are watching 
So I often cite this that often uh, uh, Ravish, who's one of our most popular uh, journalists, I wouldn't say just anchor, most popular journalist, his TRPs used to be zero. And we just extend, we all know that his TRPs are not zero because on YouTube his views are millions. But we have come into this strange society that we just believe what we're told to believe. So the same thing we talk about polarization, I absolutely don't believe that people watch NTTV or who are only believe in one, a certain... One no, I mean, this is how we see people debating. Mm -hmm. So but does that affect you? If you debate a lie, it doesn't make it any more truthful. So the same thing with polarization, you can repeat a hundred times that uh, these people hate each other or this... But that's the sad them. reality of the media these days. Well, again, I won't generalize, but I don't think any TV does that. And I don't think just any TV, I think there are, of course, many other... Uh, no, any TV does that. And, that, but and uh, this thing will do. So you can choose what to watch. You can choose whether I should put on X channel or Y channel, and that choice is in every Indian's hand. No, what I'm trying to say is that why do we have to choose the channels? I mean, why can't we have uh, most channels talking the same thing? I mean, why do we have such uh, extreme views or extreme uh, point of views on different channels? Well, I think that is a debate which also go into a freedom of speech uh, issue because you're free to broadcast if it doesn't violate the Indian law, uh, what you want. The point is, of course, that you can't, be, that's where you need courts and police, that if it does violate it, that people will step in. So you can't have, say, XTV say something and not get away with it. But I think that the more people speak out against this rubbish, I mean, it started with Sushant Singh Rajput case to the yeah. polarization, but the more people speak out against this, I think it will definitely change. But I would, I mean, again, use this platform, I use every platform that every TV journalist should make sure that they don't forget about making India better India, don't make India a worse India. And I think that is really important, that you may be just a reporter who is P2C on the ground, but what your P2C says matters. And you need to be true to your conscience for that. And just to again tell people that, I mean, you know, you think that this is, I want to get to TV, so I'll do it in any way possible. When you go to other organization and see that you come from X channel or Y channel, you're going to have many people thinking whether they take you seriously or not. You know, so it's not just getting into television in any way possible. You have to be very careful uh, what you tweet, what you say, and what you report, because it matters extremely uh, a lot. So I'll just briefly ask you one last question. So there was this PID fact check which was launched. Do you think it has helped, or do you think it has been counterproductive? That's the last question. I'm not asking your questions. Well, uh, the PIB fact check, at least in our case, we fact check the fact checks and we got back. See, in journalism, everyone will make a mistake. I'm not saying, of course, NDTV also has made mistakes. We hopefully learn from our mistakes and everyone will make a mistake. The point is, are you making the mistake to forward a particular agenda, whether it be communal, whether it be political? That's the issue. Are you an honest journalist or not? You can never find anyone who make a mistake. So fact checks are welcome from everywhere. Why PIB we see so many people on Twitter doing fact checks? If they are right, good for them. And hopefully any organization of any credibility would be more consistent <coughs> at their own fact checking if they can get it wrong so often. Thank you, Sonia. I think I finished it exactly no, in 15 no, minutes. No, no, I've been sent this. I've been sent a note that it has to be finished in 15 minutes. So, uh, you want to take more questions? You have time. Sure. Should we ask somebody in the audience? I think. Just, just one. We only have one. Oh. Since, since you all are absolutely this excited story, about the questions. This boy, this boy, I promise them. Yes, just one. Thank you. No, I don't think so at all. Because I mean, as I said, that we in fact have seen our. Uh, viewership, uh, whether it's on YouTube, as we're not on PRPs anymore, but we have seen our digital viewership and our television viewership go up a lot. So I don't think at all, and I think most of the names you mentioned, where is it, there's often competition of other newspapers just cutting into them, which may perhaps be the reason. But I don't think these YouTube channels or something, you know, people may watch them for sensation, they may watch them for entertainment. But I think we'll see that many news, big news story, whether it's COVID, whether it's, um, uh, a war, whether it's what happened in uh, Balakot, people will switch to credibility. And this has to say to all young people, eventually what will be, if you're thinking of the long game, it will be your individual credibility that will stand out. So, you know, so people will say, that, okay, I'll just do this for now, and no one will look at it and it will disappear. Nothing disappears. So you need to build on your credibility along with your CV and look at even the organizations you look for are organizations which you respect. Don't disappear on else. You yourself respect which you would read uh, for information are the organizations that you should uh, look at. And I don't think, I think really credibility will be the biggest differentiator in the years to come. Thank you, Sonia. Thanks a lot.